there you have it. You just created a robot that scrapes crypto data off of the depths of the internet. I mean, that's freaking awesome, right? What's good, fam? It's the other brother, Adam, Get Bags. And I woke up this morning and I had a choice. I could help people get laid or I could help people get money. Well, over here, we do both, all right? Today, we're gonna be downloading historical crypto price data that we can use for data analysis or you can send it to your wife's boyfriend whatever i don't care what you do with it the video is going to be in three parts we're going to be setting everything up we're going to build the bot scrape the data get it into our computer and then we're going to clean the data so we're going to be using the google chrome driver we'll be using selenium to get the data in python okay so first thing we need to do is we need to get an investing.com account so go ahead open up investing.com here we have our historical data page open for bitcoin and then you can have this free sign up right here put your email address get your credentials don't forget your credentials all right because the first thing we're going to want to do is put that into a python script good deal so we got our username and we got our password here then we're going to want to import these variables into the main script now what we want to do is we want to download the Google Chrome driver. So open up Google and you're going to want to type in here, Google Chrome driver download. Go there, be the first link here and you got to know which version of Chrome you're using. So if you go to these three buttons right here at the top, go to settings and then you click that. And then down here on the left side, there's going to be about Chrome. You click that and then it'll show your version number. So I'm running version 96 here. So I click that, that would go ahead and bring this menu up. I would download for Windows here. You got Mac, you have one chip, bam. Do that, that'll be in your downloads folder. And then you'll get a window like this. Go in there, you unzip the file, and then you have the executable file in there. Now what you wanna do is you wanna drop that into your path. So if you're using Anaconda, you wanna pull up your Anaconda prompt to see which destinations which paths are on your path so you type echo and then percentage sign capital path and then another percentage sign that's going to pull up a bunch of paths that are on your path variables um, so i located a folder here there's one in the anaconda 3 installation folder called bin here and you want to copy that executable file and drop it into one of the one of the folders that's on your path and this is one of them so then anaconda is going to be able to access the driver there okay very easy the next thing we want to do is we want to pip install selenium so open your anaconda prompt and then you can just very easily pip install selenium I already have it, so that's all good there. Nice and fast, nice and easy. Okay, so we got our account, we've got our Chrome driver in our path, and then we've got our Selenium installed. That completes the setup, and we've got our credentials ready to go. Now we're ready to start building the bot. All right, as always, first thing we wanna do is import our modules, and then we wanna take the URL from that web page that we wanna scrape from, and we're gonna put that into a string variable called URL. All right, we've got all of our modules imported and we've got the URL that we wanna use for the data scraping. Next, we wanna build a class that's gonna house the bot and we're gonna create a function that initializes the bot and that's gonna contain most of the code. All right, so it's worth noting that when we initialize the class here, we're gonna pass in the URL, the username, and the password. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is of course open up the Chrome driver and then get the URL link opened on our web page. I have the code here that's gonna open up the web page. I forgot to add this dot by. That's gonna be important. So we're gonna initialize the class, pass in the URL, use a new password. That should open up our page for us. All right, it's the moment of truth. Hey fam, look, there you go, bam, we got our page open. All right, so we're gonna continue from here. Go to our download data button and click it. That way we can bring up the sign-in page. So if we click here, we're gonna see, it's gonna pop open that sign-up page and then we're gonna wanna input our credentials into there. So to do that, we're gonna wanna click, right-click inspect. That's gonna bring up our window here. And let's just go ahead and 
inspect this right quick and then we see our element here and it has a title that contains download data so we're going to search by xpath for an a tag that contains download data all right so as you can see we were able to click the download data button it brought up our sign in page now what we want to do is go to these input boxes and send keys our credentials so right click inspect here that'll bring up your box you can see this input here has an id of login form underscore user email so we're going to search by id for that and then we'll also search i right clicked inspect the password box right below it login form underscore password so we're going to search by id and then send keys our credentials so that was clearly a great success next we want to click the sign in button so let's right click inspect sign in we're going to inspect that it looks like it has a class there so you can search by class but what we're going to go ahead and do is just copy the full xpath and then we're going to search by xpath looks like we're logged in here and then we're ready to go ahead and put our date range into this box here so what we need to do is I'm gonna implement a scroll down just so we can scroll down a little bit show you how to do that and then we're gonna to want to click into this box so we can access these input boxes here so we need to right click inspect we're gonna take a look at this box Since your boy has all the cheat codes, I already know that we're not looking for this element specifically. We're looking for this element right here above it. And so we're going to search by ID widget field. So go ahead and copy that and we'll put it in here. Oh, and also we had a dot click at the end of this find X path because we clicked the button. All right, awesome. And as I mentioned, we have a dot click at the end of that last command looks like we're able to open up that box and access our text fields here so we're going to send a clear command and a send keys to command to these all right let's actually just get this over here all right good so these have id one has the id of start date so we're going to copy that and then the other one has end date and it looks like we can just inspect right click inspect you have id so we're going to search by id to send a dot clear and then we're going to send keys our date range to each of these all right so as you can see here we've got our clear command and we've got our send keys command so that's doing its thing it's going to log in but for the date ranges here i'm going to put 2008 for our start date and so that should be like well before any time series data is available and then i have our end date here in 2030 so that should be beyond any data that's available right now looks like everything was clean and clear there next what we want to do is we want to hit click that apply button so of course we're going to do another dot click and we're going to search by id here so let's check out our inspector box do 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 all right nice so have an ID here apply button so let's go ahead and just search by ID that'll be nice and clean and easy and then we'll do another dot click at the end there to click that apply button looks like it updated our time series for us we have very recent data and then we have data that just goes back forever so pat yourself on the back now for the moment of truth what we want to do is we want to press the download data button that's right here and then this should hopefully be the last step and let it be known you got to put a sleep after you press the apply button you can't just try to click the download button right away because it won't have applied and updated the table so right click inspect I left a seven second sleep there okay and then I already know straight up because I got all the cheat codes we want to copy the full X path of this button right here it's got the title download data here so let's go ahead and press click on that button 
All right, fam, here's the moment of truth. It's gonna click the download data button. We're gonna see that CSV download there, bang, and it pops up in our download folders. You just downloaded the Crypto Time series with a robot. All right, pat yourself on the back. If you made it this far, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna have a lot more cool shit coming out for you, fam. We're gonna help you get this bag, all right? We're also gonna help you get laid, and we're gonna help you feel good, because we're gonna be funny, and it puts you in a good mood. All right, so fam, we got that time series there what we want to do next is we want to get that CSV into a pandas data frame so we're gonna pop outside the class that looks like it did its job we can just stop everything right there job well done what we want to do is make sure we have pandas installed and then go ahead and just do a quick read CSV command and read so if you know your folder you know, destination where you're doing your downloads Go ahead, copy the path and the file name, and then put that into your CSV read. All right, great. So for the rest of the time being, we're gonna just comment out our time series grabber, and we'll just use the one that we have in our file here. So read it into a data frame. Looks like we have all of our data here. That looks good. First thing we wanna do is get rid of this change percentage column. All right, bang, bang. Looks like that column dropped off the face of the earth. No problem. Next, we want to reformat this date column here to be a daytime object. All right, that all looks good. Our date is reformatted. Next thing we want to do is set this date column to be our index. That was easy. Next thing we want to do is make this price column to close because it's the closing price if you will so you see this period is the next period's opening price so it does to close and i want to change this vol dot to volume all right nice and easy we've got our column titles renamed looking nice and neat next thing we want to do is remove all the columns here and then we want to remove all the dashes for empty volume uh, values basically so if there's no volume listed for that day, they put a dash in the data set. These aren't the cleanest data sets, but you know, whatever. That all looks good. We got all of our columns removed here and all of our dashes removed. And we replaced it with zero. So let's just assume anywhere there's a dash, it was zero volume. And so then we can, of course, turn everything to numbers. All right, last, last thing we want to do, maybe not the last thing, but one of the more complicated things we want to do is in the volume column, we're going to remove all the Ks, and then we want to multiply by a thousand, and then if there's an M for million, then we want to remove the M, and we want to multiply by a million, so we're basically moving that decimal place over. All right, so as you see here, there's a for loop that if there is a K in the value in the volume column, then it replaces the K and then multiplies by a thousand. And then it forces the data type from a string to a float with this float operator here. All right, and then same thing with the millions, it removes the M and then it multiplies by a million, moving that decimal place over for you. All right, and then last but not least, we wanna convert all of these four columns, five columns here, into numeric data types. All right, so as you see there, we converted all of those string data types into numbers. All right, now we're free to go ahead and use them in mathematical operations. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is run the whole thing top to bottom. Uh, of course, I'm gonna delete this out of my folder and then we'll go ahead and give it a run. There you have it, you just created a robot scrapes crypto data off of the depths of the internet i mean that's freaking awesome right okay so now everything's ready to use in data analysis you can run a for loop over this if you have all the urls or if you have like a list of all the different cryptocurrency names that kind of that come from the website then you can just run that through a for list it'll generate all the urls for you and then it'll run all of these time series and then you can save it to like a, a database or whatever and now, now you own a crypto warehouse. All right, so happy trading, everybody. Good luck out there. Let's go ahead and get these bags.